Why don't you lift up your two hands with me? Thank you, Jesus. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. This morning, touch my life. Let your unvanished word transform my life. Let my coming into this sanctuary not be in vain. Say, Lord, this morning, let the word of God propel me to my next level. I refuse to remain the same. My life will change. Every situation about my destiny will change. I am marching forward. I am going forward with supernatural wisdom. Wisdom will not fail me. Wisdom will not disappoint me. I will succeed because I'm a child of wisdom. Shout it, I'm a child of wisdom. Lift up your hands. Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you because we are where we are because of your grace. The other day the Bible said it's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit. That we are alive is just because of your grace and your excess love. We don't take this love for granted. Not everybody began the week and still saw the end of the week. But for us and our household, everything is okay. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you and we acknowledge your divine glorious presence. This morning, all we are saying as a people is that have your way in our lives. At the end of the service, we'll be careful to give you all the glory. We thank you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Ghost. And everyone will holler a thunderous amen. Come on, let your amen be louder if you believe. Hallelujah. You may be seated in heavenly places. Well, let's appreciate the first lady of the house. Come on, put your hands together. Let's appreciate mommy. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's appreciate, you know, the pearls for such a stupendous ministration. Appreciate the pearls. Put your hands together. That was very powerful. Amen. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Shout it is my month of wisdom. Shout it is my month of wisdom. Tell yourself, beginning from this month, I will be very, very wise. Shout it, I will be very wise. Yes, you are going to be very, very wise. Amen. You see, this um, teaching I've started, or this series I started from last week, I like everybody to be very, very attentive. You have to take notes when it's necessary. Are you with me at all? Because sometimes when you go back home, and you ponder over what was shared, you will discover that you will catch some disclosure, some revelation that probably in the meeting, you know, you didn't catch. Are you with me at all? So I like you to be very fastidious because what I'm going to be saying is, is, is the bedrock of your success. Somebody shout the bedrock of my success. Because every son, every daughter in this house, you will succeed in the name of Jesus. If your amen is chorus, your breakthrough will be special. Somebody shout, I will succeed. Yes, nobody will be a failure in this house. Your amen is standing on one leg. Nobody fails in house of consecration. Somebody shout, I hear, I hear. Yes, you will not fail, you will succeed. That is why, you know, this morning when I woke up, one of the prayers, I, I say, Lord, for everyone that is very, you know, expectant, everyone that is very, you know, um, desperate for divine wisdom, I pray that by the time we are sending benediction, God will lavish that wisdom upon you. Yeah. Are you with me at all? Yes, because you need it. Somebody shout, I need it. I need it. You need it. It's very, very vital, very, very, you know, rudimentary to every success in life. Are you with me at all? Any man that wants to succeed outside wisdom, I don't know how you want to attempt that. Are you with me? It's just like a car that wants to move without an engine. If you want to succeed, God must, you know, torrent you with unusual wisdom. And that is why this month, it doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter your class. It doesn't matter the stage you find yourself in life. Because you are in this house, wisdom will come upon you. 
I say wisdom will come upon you. Somebody shout, I receive divine wisdom. It's very, very important. So, I, I, I want you to open your spirit and grab something. Tell your neighbor, grab something. Tell your neighbor, you are the reason why God has given us this team for the month. Last week, I was showing you things, you know, you can look at and know why somebody doesn't have wisdom. You remember? I've, I've been speaking on the mystery of wisdom and under that, I was saying that, you know, James chapter 1, the verse 5, the Bible said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask the Father who, you know, give it to all men liberally and abraded not. And I said, how you know that somebody is not wise? I gave you four. I'm giving you the last one, then we continue. I gave you how many? Four. What was the first one? Let's do a quick recap. Don't put it on the screen, please, please. I want to know people are really, really, you know, assimilating what I'm teaching. What did I say was number one? Can we, one, two, three, because it's the same thing we all wrote, so we shouldn't be saying different things. Okay, number one. You see yourself. <laughs> okay, Professor Mike, what was the first one? Uh -huh. When you don't have wisdom, you die premature. <laughs> number two. When you are proud, it's a sign that you are not wise. Number three. People who don't keep opportunity is a sign that you are not wise. Number four. Anybody that indulges in adultery and fornication is not wise. Number five. Number five. Any man or woman that indulges in pornography and masturbation is not wise. Pornography and masturbation is not wise. Look at me. If you bow down your head, you're a suspect. Look at me. Any man, any woman that indulges in pornography or masturbation is not wise. Tell your neighbor by you, any man, any woman that indulges in pornography or masturbation is not wise. Look at your neighbor as you are saying it. If that neighbor blinks, it's a suspect. Look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor, from today, in case you were a victim, stop it. Any man, any woman that indulges in pornography or masturbation, tell the neighbor, look at me, look at me. It's not wise. You see, how you know somebody is not wise is when the person makes it his or her business to be indulging in pornography and masturbation. I will explain. You see, the nakedness is not totally wrong, but it depends on the environment of the nakedness. For instance, when God created man and his wife, the Bible said they were both naked and they were not ashamed in Genesis. You remember? Man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. So nakedness in the parameter or in the confinement of marriage, the institution of marriage, is permitted. There is nothing wrong with it. But there is everything wrong when there is nakedness outside of marriage. So if you are not married and you are showing your body to somebody you are not married to, it's a sign that you are not wise. No, because when the man and the woman were naked, the Bible said they were not ashamed. So, it is shameful when it's not in the confinement of marriage. So, those of you that, you know, like to show your body to every, you know, dick and hurry, there is something wrong with you. Whether you are the man that is showing nakedness or the woman that is showing, none of you should be proud. Are you with me at all? Listen, listen, listen. I've heard people say stuff like, you know, Masturbation is not a sin. In fact, some renowned preachers have come out to say it's okay. I have a big problem with them. Because it depends on the masturbation. <laughs> if, for instance, you have to go to hospital, they have to examine you, check you out, you know, they need to collect some starch. There is a way 
they will get you to go and collect the starch for yourself. That one is different. Are you with me at all? That one is for medical purpose. But there is another one that something leads you into doing that. That is why whatever cajole somebody or provoke somebody to go into masturbation, that is where the problem is. Are you with me at all? So if you make it your business to be watching pornography every now and then, the likelihood of you entering into masturbation is very high. I will show you some very agitating statistics on folks in church that indulge in... That's why I'm teaching this one. Eh? The, the percentage of pastors, the percentage of church workers, the percentage of children of God who are indulging in this thing called pornography and masturbation is very alarming. I'm telling you. That is why in case you are under that kind of whims and caprices today, may God's word deliver you. Your amen is very, very, you know. Are you with me at all? Listen, God doesn't like anybody that indulges in pornography. When you meet him, ask him. He doesn't like it. Why? Because in the eyes of God, it's sinful. Hey, some of you now, if we go into your mobile phones, we'll be amazed at things we'll see. But you are a child of God. You are still lifting up your hands. We lift our hands to the great. Drop your hands to which great I am. You have pornography on your phone. It's a problem. Why? Because God, you know, intended nakedness for married couple. Are you with me at all? So if boyfriend, girlfriend, you are busy exposing your body to each other, you are not wise. You are not wise. Okay, you remember in Genesis chapter 3, when God occasionally or every now and then God will come down and have fellowship with Adam and Eve. But this occasion when God came down, and don't forget that scripture, it was only God that was in the garden. There was no other human being apart from Adam and Eve. When God came down, he said, Adam, where are thou? Genesis 3. Adam said, I am hiding. He said, why are you hiding? He said, because I am naked. Is that not what he said? He said, because I am naked. So in the eyes of Adam, it is wrong for God to see my nakedness. That's what he said. So if it is wrong for God to see his nakedness, then, because they are, they are our first parents. Adam and Eve, are they not our first parents? He said we are hiding. Why? Because we are naked. So nakedness to the public, not in the confinement of your marriage, is very wrong. That's why people who indulge in pornography for, as a profession to make money, something is wrong with them. You can until you repent, you can never enter heaven. If you keep watching pornography and you don't repent, you can never enter heaven. So I'm praying that after this service, in case you have some stuff on your phone, you would delete it with the speed of lightning. Delete it fast. Are you with me at all? Because it's wrong. Then guess what? When they said they were naked, let me just abridge the story. God killed an animal. Eh? And out of the animal, he covered, he made some clothes, covered their nakedness. Which means even God, he doesn't like to see your nakedness. In that regard. So if God doesn't want to see your nakedness in public, not in, or if it's in marriage, that is okay. But if it's not in marriage, God doesn't want to see. Because he had to cover their nakedness. But this generation, even some of the church daughters, see the way you dress. Which means shut up. They don't want pie on this you are. A child of God. Now we sit at home, a girl. Yeah, yo. Oh, how? Because you are supposed to show that to your husband. Cover yourself. I'm teaching you. <laughs> Those things are sacred. It's for your husband. Why are you showing it to everybody? Which me shut up. Now I know. A hippo. You know what I'm To be our mind in the business. One planet. Or you worship and you boss, no, I come, I won't fault. Come on, she said, your mouth, she said, yeah. And they are women. Let them appear in modest apparel. When you dress inappropriately, it's a sign you are not wise. Why? Because you are promoting nudity. 
Shen your manu expose you because on our body. And today we have carried that madness into the house of God. So people dress anyhow. It's wrong. You're, you are doing mini pornography. That's a mini pornography. Because there are some people who left the world and they abandoned some things. Let's help them to be saved. Don't use your own problem to come and spoil it for him. It's, it's, it's bad. If God took time to cover somebody's nakedness in public, because God was the only person in the garden with them. If you are not married, tell yourself, no man sees my nakedness, whether you were a man or a woman, until you are married. What do you make a boom food? Miss me, come and say. Because what I'm telling you is the truth. It's the truth. If Richard, you were not married and you were keeping your nakedness for your wife, is there anything wrong with it? So why is it that the kind of generation we find ourselves, that's the level of depravity and decadence we have entered. People who are showing themselves, exposing their cleavages, showing their breasts, showing their bottles, and only to Mr. Shores. You see a very big bum cheek, so say. About that bang. Every infant. You see, these are things we are doing. And when you enter hellfire, he said, Lord, what did I do? See, foolishness has ended you in hellfire. A child of God, do you have to show your buttocks? I don't know which man too will be moved by that. Then you decide to marry a lady because you saw the cheeks on her bumps. Me name that said her cross here with cheeks. Those of you men that indulge in masturbation, stop it. It's not wise. I said we need PAP. Baby oil will fear in answer. You are not wise. Because there is there is there is an effect. Eventually, you will have the effect. It, it, it has a very inimical effect on your health. You see, when you are not wise, you don't think about it. Hey, but daddy, you don't understand. Sometimes I don't know how to help myself. Help yourself. Is that the way to help yourself? Is there any man that never felt like have everybody had that feeling? But it's the antidote. It's a moment to masturbate. You have all manner of toys. I'm, I'm preaching. You know, this is the house of I'm preaching. Because we can't allow the world to guide and direct us. If you are wise, you will not go and buy toys. For what? Hey, were you there when they were making the toy? And you are busy masturbating as a man. You are not, you are, imagine you are a church worker or you are a pastor or you are a committed member in the house of consecration. Now, are you not ashamed? Something should even break your conscience. What is wrong with me? With all the preaching my father has been preaching and teaching. Can't I just, I pray for anybody that is suffering from one weakness or the other, that is tied to last. May God deliver you today. I say, may God deliver you today. Tell somebody pornography is wrong. Tell somebody if you are into masturbation, quit it immediately. It's not good for you. You will suffer eventually. Don't be shy. You better, when we are praying, say, Lord, give me wisdom to break from this addiction. You need to break away from it. Anybody that makes you feel is okay, once in a while. You see, those kind of people that tell you once in a while, I mean, is this not your first time? What have you done wrong? How can somebody give you that kind of counsel? Listen, if you have a friend who doesn't dress properly, who dress very indecent, tell that friend, you are a child of God, don't dress like that. Tell that friend. Because there's a way Christians dress. Some young men too don't know how to dress. Showing your Mickey Mouse. Who wants to see your boxer shorts? You are not wise. If you are wise, you dress decently. Are you with me at all? You don't expose. Okay, because 
a man of six pack, one quan hour pack, till the piano will be a bee, Monshe. Six pack doesn't make anybody successful. Six pack, you don't eat it. If six pack can make somebody a millionaire, eh? All the macho men that are fast in Ghana, Mr. Ghana, come on, you know, millionaires. Are you with me at all? And in this house, I want us to be different. What did I say? You are watching a movie. Too many sexual scenes. Instead of forwarding it, you are busy. Hey, go for you in your mouth. Go for you in your mouth. Go for you. And you are still watching. Why do they have fast forward on your remote? And when you are married, it's not a license to watch pornography. If both of you are also doing it, you are not wise. You see, there's a way you want to feel okay. You don't want your conscience to condemn you. So you feel, but I'm married. Okay, so honey, let's watch it together. It's okay. After all, it's, I'm watching with my husband. You enter hellfire together. It's wrong. The person you are watching, is it your brother? The person you are watching, is it your sister or is your husband or wife? Is it not somebody's nakedness you are watching? That's why there are a lot of complications in marriages. Because you are seeing things, you want your husband to become Superman. You want your wife to become Cat Lady. What's wrong with you? It's because of the nonsense you are watching. So you are putting pressure on yourself. It's a sign you are not wise. You are not wise. What you are telling yourself, where did you get it from? Where did you get it from? Would your, all your revelations in life is in Prosconio. You never come up with any decent revelation that can move the family forward. Let me show you some statistics. God will help us. Lift up your hands and say, Father, as my hand is lifted, from today, any area of my life, the spirit of lust is troubling me. By divine wisdom, I terminate it. I terminate it. Listen, I was preaching in Manchester years ago, and a man of about 65 years old entered my, you know, the office. He said, man of God, I want to talk to you. I said, talk to me. 65 years. He said, man of God, I'm doing well for my life. I'm, I'm so upset, everything. But I have a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, I can't stop masturbation. I said, when did you start? He said, it was about 14 years. It's a serious thing. But he's, the, he's an elder in that church. Elder. We take some things for granted. He said, he can't. Because the thing, he has been doing it for long. Some of you have been watching pornography, masturbating for years, and you are still doing it. Until you decide, Lord, Terminate the spirit. It will never leave you. It is your decision. It's a sign that you have received wisdom. Are you with me at all? Look at it. This statistics I'm giving you is after they have done a survey of over 20 million people. Look at it. 70% of Christian youth pastors are victims of this situation. 68% of church-going men and women <laughs> between the ages of 18 and 62 are actively on porn site. 59% <laughs> of pastors after a good sermon Go and just seek pleasure. 59%. Is that a small number? That's why most of us can't preach consecration. We can't preach righteousness. We can't preach holiness. Because you can't talk about what you are a victim of. Children from the ages of seven. That's why these days, if you're a mother or you're a parent and you give your children mobile phone, once in a while you should check what they are doing. Are you with me at all? And you can't tell your child not to indulge in it when you are watching it yourself. 
when they see you watch, wouldn't they watch? So when they grow up, do they have a problem with it? 56% of divorces in this generation involves one party having obsessive interest in pornographic sites. Yes, because everything you are saying, you want to see it in your marriage. And the guy too is not like that. The lady too is not like that. So it will cause problems in the marriage. The people you are watching, do you know the things they do to be doing what they are doing? Some of you too are on some serious drugs. Serious drugs. Who they are called so Sixty-eight percent of men die prematurely because of excessive intake of drugs. Because you want to prove to your wife that you are you are you are you are Van der Holyfield. In the United States, for instance, this is specifically United, 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. Pornography use, pornography use increases marital infidelity by the rate of 300%. That is, this one there, it was for America. So, pornography is a major distraction. And you see, the emphasis here is not to outside the soul. I'm talking about those of us in the kingdom. In the kingdom. But in house of consecration, I know God is delivering us this morning. I say, I know God is delivering us this morning. Somebody shout, I am free. Shout it, I am free. Shout it, I am free. Shout it, I am free. Lift up your hands. Father, I pray. That for anyone under the sound of my voice, whatever the enemy is projecting, for those who are not going through it today, whatever the plan of the devil is in the future, by the word of God, I terminate it. I say, I terminate it. And every hand that is lifted, Lord, we don't want to know by names, but we are saying, if there is anybody under the sound of my voice that is a victim of masturbation, victim of pornography, something that will take them to hellfire today, we exterminate it in the name of Jesus. Husbands are free. Wives are free. Bachelors are free. Spinsters are free. Men are free. Women are free. Boys are free. Girls are free. Thank you, my father. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. So, Anytime somebody indulges in that, just know it's a sign that they don't have what? They don't have what? You see, one of the best gifts, one of the profiting things God can do in the life of any child of God is to give you relationship. <laughs> one of the best gifts, look at me, one of the best things God can do in the life of any child of God is to give you good relationships. Are you with me at all? Do you know any man, any woman God gives to you eh, as a door? Eh, somebody you are supposed to enjoy some kind of solace, some kind of sukkah. If you don't have wisdom, you will lose those people. This is why wisdom is a mystery. Because it takes wisdom to retain good people in your life. When you are not wise, good people will become your enemies. That's why the people that should be helping you suddenly they have become your persecutors. Why? Because you are not using wisdom. From today, any man God is bringing your way, any woman God is bringing your way to help you fulfill destiny, may God give you wisdom to keep them. Your amen is very discouraging. I say, may God give you wisdom to keep them. Somebody shout, I receive wisdom to keep good people. I'm telling you, everything you are looking for in life it's tied to somebody. If you don't have wisdom, you will miss your helpers. People have lost out on opportunities because they were not wise. Eh? The man you were just rude to, the woman you were just rude to, that was the key to your success. 
2019, we will not repeat that same blunder. I said, we will not repeat that same blunder. I prophesy with my telescopic eyes. Between now and end of this one, any man God is bringing your way, that will be a door, that will be a way of solace and succor in your life. May God release them into your life. May wisdom bring them into your life. Somebody shout, I receive it. Give somebody a high five. Tell the person, you have to be wise. That is wisdom. No, just imagine. Imagine going to God in prayer and assuming God is mommy. I come to God. God, why? Why? Help my life. And God is saying, have I not given you Gideon? Have I not given you Michael? Have I not given you James? But because you don't have wisdom, you didn't even know that Michael was a door. James was a door. Gideon was a door. When you don't have wisdom, doors that God opens, you'll be closing it yourself. I pray for you. This month, may any door God has opened for you, may wisdom keep it open forever. I say, may wisdom keep it open forever. May God bring financial doors into your life. May God bring marital doors into your life. May God bring prosperity doors into your life. Somebody shout, I receive it. Listen, the key to my exploits in Europe it didn't come from a woman that was a prophetess. It didn't come from a woman that was a preacher. It came from somebody who was just an announcement reader in a church. But because of wisdom, I knew that this was my opportunity. I was supposed to be on holiday and I found myself in this person's house. The person said to me, there is, a, there is a, an apostolic gathering that I think since you are a pastor, maybe you should attend. Even if she didn't add, since you are a pastor, you should attend. Wisdom will tell you, this is an opportunity to be a part of. That was all. So imagine, I'm praying, Lord, when will you take me to the nations of the world? Lord, why? Lord, this. Lord, And the God is saying, I have an God answers you by sending you human beings. Nobody has met God physically. Anything you are looking for is in another man's custody. If you are not wise, you will keep marking time. When the people that are supposed to deliver you, they are, pass, but they are surpassing you every day. But today, because of wisdom, it shall never be your portion again. I say it shall never be your portion again. Receive wisdom. I say receive divine wisdom. Don't lose good people. Eh? How can a good person become your enemy? How can somebody God has said should give you a plot of land? Suddenly, you are fighting the person. How can you fight the person on whose shoulder you will see far? It's because you are not wise. You are not wise. Give me Job 2, 22 verse 2. Can a man be profitable to God? Oh, Makadi Bahaya. May God raise people who are wise in this church. May the spirit of wisdom build upon people in this church. Can a man be profitable? I'm preaching on the mystery of wisdom. Tell somebody wisdom is everything. Wisdom, Proverbs 4 7, is a principal thing. Get it. Can a man be profitable unto God? Look at me. Can a man be profitable unto God? Can a man pay tight? Can a man serve God? Can a man be committed to the things of God? Can a man decide, I will not indulge in, you know, decadence. I will not indulge in unrighteousness. Can a man do all these things? Can a woman say to herself, until I'm married, no man defiles me. Until I'm married, I am keeping myself. Can a woman decide that the only man that will see my nakedness is my true husband? Can a woman be profitable to God and not be profitable to himself or herself? Why? It's because you are not wise. You can't do all these things and not succeed. If you don't succeed, it means you are not wise. Can a man be profitable? Do all the things you are supposed to do as a child of God. And at the end of the day, you come home with zero achievement. It's because you are not wise. Hear me? When you meet God, ask him. It is not possible for somebody to be committed to God. You are, you are precariously committed, deadly committed. You are faithful. You are serving God. You don't give useless and flimsy excuses. You are always there. You can't do all these things. You pay tight. 
regularly. You give offering. When you pledge, you redeem. You are abstaining from decadence and God will not bless your life. It's not possible. The reason why you are not seeing the blessing is because you are not wise. You are not wise. Look at it. As he that is wise may be profitable to himself. In other words, if a man is wise and is profitable to God, automatically you'll be profitable to yourself. In this month of May, I prophesy, anything your hands find it to do, you shall see profit in it. I say you shall see escalation in it. You shall see increase in it. Receive that power. Receive that impartation. Rise up and shall fire. somebody high five, tell the person, you got to be wise. You got to be wise. You see, mommy, anointing and wisdom, they are not the same. You can be very anointed and foolish. You can be very gifted and very foolish. That's the truth. You see, I know people are very anointed, but it doesn't show on their physical life. What you see with all the anointing you are, what have you achieved? What have you because even your wife doesn't see your anointing? Your your children, they don't even want to hear it. But you believe you are anointed, no doubt about that. But there is something missing. There is a missing element that is wisdom. You see, the Bible said, Is it John 3 34? Jesus was given the anointing. Without measure. He was given the spirit. Jesus the son of God. He was given the anointing. Without measure. <laughs> so you couldn't measure. The anointing on Jesus life. Are you with me at all? Why? Because the anointing was given to him. He was given the spirit. The spirit there is the anointing. Without measure. But the same Jesus that was given the anointing. Before he was born without measure. In Luke chapter 2 verse 52. The Bible said he still had to grow. In wisdom and in stature. <laughs> Follow me. The man was anointed without measure. But in Luke 2.52, the Bible said he had to increase in wisdom. So your level of anointing must take, uh, your level of wisdom must take the, le your level of anointing must take the level of your wisdom. As you are increasing in anointing, your wisdom must also increase at the same level. That is why people are anointed, but they are foolish. Jesus had to increase in wisdom. Don't ever equate the two in the same column. Anointing and wisdom are two different things. They are what? Two different things. You can stretch your hands. People will fall under the power. It doesn't make you wise. You can prophesy. It doesn't mean you are wise. Did you ever see Solomon prophesy? Did you ever see Solomon casting out devils? Or was he not wise? Let's not confuse the two. That is why this month, anointing is good. Gift is good. Potential is good. But in addition to all that, may God give you wisdom. I say, may God give you divine wisdom. Somebody shout, oh God, after today, baptize me with divine wisdom. Give me Exodus, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Let, let's read from verse 10. Let me show you something. Oh, Jesus. If the iron, can you see that? If the what? If the iron be blunt and you do not wet the edge. I, I, you see, I'm showing you the process to how you can receive this mystery of wisdom. Are you with me at all? Every woman must desire it. Every man desire wisdom. Desire it. It gives you an advantage in life. If the iron, the iron there is not talking of physical iron. Eh? These, are, these, these things are metaphoric. This is a meta When you say iron, the iron there speaks of your advantage in life. The iron here is not talking about physical knife or physical sword. It's talking about your advantage somebody, I have an advantage.
tell somebody, I have an advantage. You have an advantage. Your education is your advantage. Your gifting is your advantage. That you are a very pretty girl is an advantage. That you are a very handsome man is an advantage. Are you with me at all? You are very intelligent. It's part of your grace. The advantage that speaks of your grace. Are you with me at all? Everything you have that makes you superior to your contemporary is part of your grace. So if you are pretty, it's part of your grace. If you are, you were in school, was it everybody that was first in class? Talk to me. Some people were first, some people were last. Those who were last, they will still have something that they are better than that those who were first. That's the truth. Every man has his grace, has his advantage. Today, I prophesy, may God help you to uncover your advantage. I said, may God help you to uncover your advantage. Somebody shout from today. My advantage will be uncovered. You have an advantage. You, you see, when you have advantage, which is a part of your grace, and you don't have wisdom, you will fail in this life. Grace, as good as grace is, as stupendous as grace is, you still need wisdom. You still need wisdom. That is why he said, if the iron be blown, come on, and you do not wear, so there is a way you can keep your advantage in season all the time. There is a way you can keep making, you know, whatever gives you a comparative advantage over your contemporary. There is a way, there is a way you can live your life that every now and then you are on top of your game. You, you go up, you never come down. Can I prophesy? I, I just said in my spirit, after this teaching, as God escalates you, as God exalts you, you will never come down in the name of Jesus. Your money is going up. Your favor is going up. Your power is going up. Anything God takes up in your life, it will never come down again. Somebody shout, it will never come down again. So how do I sharpen it? How do I get my advantage to work for me for the rest of my life? There is a way you do that. Are you with me at all? Tell someone that's why you have to go for wisdom. The question is, how do I sharpen it? Because advantage, grace, without wisdom, my dear, you will be a prototype of colossal disgrace. You need to sharpen it. How? <laughs> By coming to the feet of the master. I told you wisdom is an exclusive gift from God. God is the giver of gift. God is the giver of wisdom. If you want wisdom, you must be at the feet of his master. You see, people who don't like to go to church, they can never have wisdom. Wisdom is not dispensed at the drug shop. Wisdom is not dispensed at the restaurant. I told you last week that you can't study wisdom. Wisdom is not in books. You can't read book and get wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. And to receive it from him, you must be seated to receive from him. As I'm preaching now, you are receiving wisdom. That is how you sharpen your advantage. Sit down. Eh? You know, there are some people who go to church only for programs. You only show up when it's a program. You only show up when it is convenient for you. You are not ready to be wise. You are not ready to sharpen your advantage. We have Wednesday service. We have Saturday service. We have Sunday service. We have Holy Ghost service. The only service you attend in a month is Sunday service. Some people do only Holy Ghost service. And you want to get to the same level of other people who are growing in wisdom. The Bible said, and the young man grew in wisdom. Your growth is tied to your hearing of God's word. You don't hear God's word once and increase in wisdom forever. You must be hearing it. Oh, that's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. Hebrews 10, 25. Why? Because anytime you come to the master's feet, he will dispense his repertory word. As you are receiving the word of God, your wisdom is sharpened. Your wisdom is increased. Your wisdom is gaining momentum. I prophesy. Those of you that have been committed, Sunday you are here. Wednesday you are here. Saturday you are here. I prophesy with my telescopic eye. May wisdom be low upon you. I say, may wisdom pillow upon you. Rise up and shout, I take it by fire. Wisdom is taken at the feet of the master. If you don't come to church, you can never be wise. Go and tell any pharmacist that you want wisdom. They'll tell you you are confused. 
Wisdom is in the house of God. <laughs> you remember in Luke chapter 2, Jesus went to a small village. I think verse 42. He went to a small village where three people lived. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Anytime Jesus will visit this house, you will discover that Martha will be busy, you know, with other things. And Mary will be sitting down asking questions. And Jesus will answer. Then one day, Martha, who is an epitome of a modern day Christian in the house of consecration, they answer to membership, but they are never seated. Why do you go to church? House of consecration. In a month, how many times do you go there? Where do you work? SIC. In a month, how many times do you go there? Every day, with the exception of weekends. If it's Saturdays, you can work there. Where do you go to church? House of consecration. How many times do you go there? Twice in a month. Are you not ashamed? And you still believe, Lord, why, am I, why is my level not? He cannot change your level because you don't have the requisite wisdom for that level of translation. Martha was always complaining. Jesus said, Martha, sit down. What Mary has decided to do, she has chosen the best part. Sitting down and hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. Faith coming by hearing. Romans 10, 17. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing severally. You don't hear God's word once and increase in wisdom. You must hear it again and again and again and again and again. Why? Because you want to have wisdom in excess. People who don't sit down. Eh? You don't sit down. You know why people can't sit down? Because they believe they know it all. If I don't have a Bible at home, when you know somebody is ready to backslide, that's how they talk. But it's church going to church. Is it not in your heart? Did God not know that? But he still said, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Did he say we should assemble in your kitchen? You see, anybody that believes they can succeed without God, <laughs> you better start repenting. And sometimes you don't say it openly, but your actions tell it. Most people will tell you, me, I'm using God to succeed. Though. It's easy for you to say, but when we watch your actions, it doesn't commensurate with what you are saying. A lot of people have preceded God. A lot of people, you see, this thing called premature exposure is in medicine, is in law, it's in ministry. I can't talk about medicine. I can't talk about. I can talk about ministry because that's why I operate. You see, a lot of people are not patient. You know, when I was brooding over this way, I I sat down and I said, Lord, Pastor James, I served under Reverend Steve Manson's church for years. In fact, I must have joined the church around ninety-eight. I told you this year is fifteen years I became a pastor. I realized I served in his ministry eight years. I never handled microphone to preach. Follow me. I never handled microphone to preach. Even at the time, he now decided I should preach. Caritia. He didn't give me main service. He gave me a service they call Tari Hour. Tari Hour. And no cry, no. Senior woman, we pray premature. But I was still in place. You see, premature exposure is what has caused a lot of destiny shipwrecked. People are not patient. It's easy to say, I love God, but wait until your love is tested. I tell mommy every day, I say, people say, I love, I love. You don't love until you are really, it's just like saying you love God. Wait until you encounter calamity. Then we will know if you love God. Because some people encounter adversity and they throw in the towel. Your test of love is at the point of your adversity. I was there. I, how? You see, because I knew I can't succeed by myself. That's what wisdom tells you. The Bible said, allow patience her perfect work an entire wanting. You, there is a stage where patience must take effect in your life. Patience must break your pride. 
Patience must make you feel you are useless. Patience must make you feel what you are doing is not acknowledged. It's, you see, a lot of people like product, but they don't like process. This is mommy's bag. It's nice, but I don't think it became a bag at once. It went through. But most times, when it's going through a process, nobody wants to buy. What people want to buy is the product. But I tell you, if you go into anything without God leading you, <laughs> is it Proverbs 14, 17? There is a way that cement right. But the end thereof is destruction. Is what? Destruction. I had people who came to me when I was in another man's ministry. Man of God, you are anointed. Man of God, you are gifted. In fact, these people love you. Collect some and go. <laughs> it's on record. When you meet Reverend Steve Mensah, ask him. Um, I don't know after, because I've, I, we parted if the church is also almost nine years. That means I, I left Reverend Steve very long time. But I left appropriately. In fact, there were instances where I could have left, but I didn't go. You know why? There is a way that cement right. Mm. Mm. When you are wise, you ponder over things before you do them. Mm. Every day, Reverend Steve Mentor sees me say, I have no doubt you are succeeding. Why? He said, because you are very intelligent. I had people who were telling me, start your own, go with people. Senior men in that ministry were talking to me behind the scenes. You can go, move your own. Do this. I didn't listen. But today, I'm on record because every other person that you know took the useless counsels of others that left, they didn't succeed. Because I waited. And you see, Pastor James is here. I love him. He's dedicated. He's a son. If Pastor James decides to leave me today and he tells me, I told mommy today, I will never argue with anybody that says God said. I will never argue. Are you with me at all? If Karija comes to me and says, Daddy, God told me, am I the one to go and argue with God? If Karija comes to me and says, Daddy, I'm trying to deal with something. Can you help me? That's a different thing. But once you say God, if Pastor James comes to me and says, God said I should leave, I will bless him. And I'll let him go. You'll be the first. <laughs> will you be the first? Some people have led like that. Are you with me at all? I will leave you because you said God. So when you go, the God that took you out must make sure you succeed. Are you following me at all? Yes. Or what I'm teaching is too heavy for you. This is wisdom. Everyone that left inappropriately didn't succeed. By the grace of God, I say to God's glory, Reverend Steve enters some places and they will tell him, do you know Reverend Kinsley? They don't even know that's your father. Why? Because I served faithfully. When I was supposed to go, I said I won't go. Why? Because God had not given me the instruction. Am I helping somebody at all? Because in, in the school of wisdom, wisdom will tell, let God guide you. The mistake Saul made was always listening to the people. The devil always let you hear what you want to hear. When I started preaching in that church, you close. Some people come and tell you, you preach better than our guy. I know that is trouble for me. If you are not wise, you start saying, wow. Ministry, you're preaching. Go on. You had the oil gum in 2004 as a pastor. A lot of the things I know, I learned on the job. It looks easy. It looks easy. One member, one so eh, better. The kind of stuff that goes in behind the scenes, you have no idea. What I'm trying to say is premature exposure. You are learning a trade in somebody's place. Yempong, yempong. It means you are not wise. You are in the place we are dispensing wisdom so that you can become great. You can become powerful. You are quitting. What's wrong with you? Who's your mechanics? Who must have pawn? Who are pawn? 
Na wan ka na de kwa experiment. Am I teaching at all? <laughs> to learn, you must want to be taught. To refuse to be taught, Bible see a foolishness. You must sharpen it. How? By coming to church. Come to church. Hear God's word. Hear God's word. Your wisdom will increase. Listen, I dare you, anybody that will say, after today, Wednesday I'm here, Saturday I'm here, Sunday I'm here, before end of this month, you will have a palpable miracle in your hands. Your amen is very discouraging. I say you have a palpable miracle in your hands. Somebody shout, I receive it. Tell somebody, go for wisdom. Go for wisdom. Go for wisdom. Go for wisdom. You know, sometimes when you see a woman or a man that is going to enter destruction, but tells you God said, and you can't help the person, it's very painful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. But are you with me at all? Tell your neighbor, don't help somebody to make a mistake. You are a church worker. You, are, you want to leave something. It's a nice way of saying it. I will bless you. It's better you go with the blessing. I am succeeding because I still remember I was in the office with Reverend Steve Mensah, Reverend Stanley, the resident pastor. They poured oil. You say, go and succeed. Go and succeed. If I had left without that, no matter my anointing, no matter my gifting, I won't be seen all over the world like I'm seen. Why? Because I won't be wise. You are staying with your mother. Anytime she's in the kitchen cooking, unko, unshia dear. Okay, so remember, say ni ayen katen kwa in. Uye ni say nwa ni say oh mami mire minim dada. I fo ko wari ana ayo problem. Uye ni kwa in as a start. Why? Upo unhun tem wa kitchen hodo to. You are not wise. And you say about local food that unimye. Who's walk off a bear my own pet for him food? Or pe cocontain, or pe dear who, or pe contumbre, or pe way, or go crow. Who, who crow there? This is what the milk of crew goom. When your mother was going to market, you never followed her. You thought that when you ate, oh, man, oh, the next time. Young come market, no one baby, your tone toes, your tone jenny, your tongue mamone, your tongue, you never went. And now it will market years, market market years. market? said saying? Twenty Ghana for mommy. Those of you who are spinsters, you are still living with your parents. This is wisdom. This is what? Wisdom. Start learning certain nitty gritties so that when you enter marriage, you can succeed. I'm telling you, not everybody likes restaurants. And no crime. Wow. Wednesday, I'll be teaching on wisdom for good health. I'll be teaching on wisdom for good health. You worth it. How? Come to church. You see what I'm giving you? Eh? Some people will pay to hear it. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Tell somebody to be patient. One of my strengths in life is endurance and patience. So when you see a man is blessed, don't say he's lucky. You can't survive what he has survived. You can't pay. You can't pay the price. Everybody's eyes is seeing the price. P R I Z E, but they don't want to pay the price. P R I C. Or be up a price, you know. But are you willing to pay that price for the price? You are not willing. I'm not going to Give me Proverbs 3.21. And I conclude and we pray. Proverbs 3.21. Next week I will show you people in the Bible that didn't use wisdom. Let's read it together. My son! 
the son there is a ref- it's not a reference to gender. Are you with me at all? It can be a man, it can be a woman. Put it, put it. Okay, put your name there. Put your name there. Kingsley, let not. Uh huh. Keep what? Keep what? Keep what? Keep what? Sound wisdom. Look at me. It's not automatic that because you are born again, you will prosper. It's not automatic that because you are born again, you will build a house. It's not automatic that because you are born again, you must necessarily marry a good man. Are you with me at all? It's not automatic. Whatever you are, eh, it's because of the choices you have made. And you can only make right choices when you have sound wisdom. Your future is at the mercy of your choices. Every child of God, your future. If you are married to a bully, it's because of the choice you made yesterday. If you are married to a lazy woman, it's because of the choice you made yesterday. Every man, every woman is a product of their choices. That is why if you have sound wisdom, you make right choices. Hey, and go for me and you why particularly when it comes to the issue of marriage in this house, I want to be involved. I want to know if you are making the right decision. Because me jawa, over here vital starts and go on why you mistake. Because the average man is moved by what he sees, not what he decides. Every man is a victim. Every what? When I met mommy for the first time. To be honest, I had gone to preach in Newtown. Then I saw her in my mother's shop. Mm. When I saw her, I left the spirit. Mm. <laughs> no, I was moved by sight. That was, that's the truth. Pastor James, who is your Barbara? I didn't even know who. The spirit to me. So, who did you want the spirit? Any announce we agree. We see our band the first time I win the spirit. Hey. And yet, we need your teaching. Because some of us have not gotten there yet. You meant I fell in love with your spirit. Really? <laughs> and you want penache. I also want penache because who woman some the entire cause. So every man is moved by what they see. So if you are going to base your decisions only because of sight, you are finished. You are finished. What is it about the lady you want to marry? That is no more fair. No more fair. What do you mean can any other thing in addition? Okay, thank God. Physically she's pretty. So what again, daddy? Put your dress here home. That is easy. What do you your bad and then I'm being with that girl here. On Kenya, it's the same So you marry the person, then problems unleash. Then they come back to you, Daddy. I don't understand. Do I have to understand for you? The lady too has accepted. Why, Daddy? You know there are some guys when you carry them around, they know say when you be. Or a TikTok. I'm not fair. What do you mean? What do you mean? Yes, kaka kaka. Daddy, what's that? What car? Say a pony. Say a Mazda. Found or car. Then you take them to your parents too, because my many papa no susu nyuso waste their money. Oh, she a bema na. Oh, Musa ni bibi here. Where do you work? Wow, congrats. <laughs> because Nidia Kakro Benya will muntino. Wa peninsula Makola. Oh, by Esmas, where do you work? You might be a kid, and Tiana supply me in a salon. I've been able to tell my media man. I've been to be so my swingers. A friend of Banet Ranch, Mr. Wadi and Co. Katra. Parents are also not helping. But from today, 
Wisdom will help you to make right choices. May God release sound wisdom upon you. You will not make mistakes in 2019 again. Somebody shout, I receive it. Somebody shout, sound wisdom. When you have sound wisdom, there are some offers you will not get involved. Some contracts may look like good contracts, but if you are wise, wisdom will tell you, don't enter. You will waste your money. Are you with me at all? Girls, may God give you wisdom. Those of you who are believing God for husbands, may God give you wisdom to make right choices. Wisdom. Wisdom. Sound wisdom. Somebody shout sound wisdom. Shout the sound wisdom. Am I helping somebody at all? I pray for you. I decree sound wisdom upon every head. Monday, may wisdom enter your life. Tuesday, may wisdom enter your life. Wednesday, may wisdom enter your life. Somebody shout, I receive it. Shout it, I receive it. Give somebody a high five. Tell the person, be wise. Tell somebody, be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Give me Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Let, me, let me show you something there. Then we pray. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Ecclesiastes 10, 10. But wisdom is profitable to what? Wisdom is profitable to what? Listen, if you ever marry the wrong person, you didn't follow wisdom. Wisdom is profitable to what? Wisdom is profitable to what? If you read the wrong course in the university, it's because you didn't follow wisdom. That's the truth. Because wisdom can't fail. It's profitable to direct. That is why when you become wise, there are some changes you have to make. You know, when we're going to university, eh? Obiyan in it, you. What Obiyan in assignment? When we say Kofobi took delight in, what do you read? Chemistry, physics, math, and statistics. F.A. That's cool, no, you hear? Effort. Because when we were in secondary school, what course are you reading? Science. I said, oh, you're a guy. <laughs> One of my being. Biology, chemistry, physics, elective mass. Into, they carried that infantile wisdom into university. So when they got there, we are science, you know, they said, you're all brain. After what's about to do university? What of chemistry? On one case, what's the baby dada? What for physics? Mathematics, lecture, and anchor said this. I said, Department will be in your second apartment. It's who are open. So now, yeah, we are now creating department in a man. Some people just choose courses without wisdom. Now, people say, Oh, bread. But the truth of the matter is, I don't know if it has changed. But when you start with four subjects, you are not likely to finish with four, maybe two or one. So, wisdom will tell you, Look for some theater art. That can give you some good grace. Look for some archaeology. Then you balance it with psychology or sociology. School will be We send you a good class. Because first degree, what it does, whether you read oceanography, whatever you read, it gives you, it just opens your mind. That's what first degree does for everybody. Why dream will be so your accountant? Who will crown your accountant? Before you become a are you with me at all? It's a wisdom. It's profitable to direct. When I entered the university, we go for the Talofa then. I'm a kind economics. Mass, stars. Now I'm sure I'm a shit. Maybe I'm a shit. 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 i am now, if a philosophy in this a sociology is all, if you drew baby, I'm say no. I philosophy never bought me to third year. To me, pay me pay because preaching me here philosophy. And I'm this sociology. I'm in here. Maybe, maybe school no. Who said to me here? Because wisdom didn't direct you. And then who told you what? Who told you say yeah? You buy a mistake, oh. 
one try, 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 my face. Let's rest. They had to pass you. It was a man bread. What do you call? So those of you who are planning to enter university, let wisdom direct you. Don't look at some, some people are sharp. Some people are there because they want to read medicine. They want to read law. They are up for it. But in your case, wisdom may not be directing you there. And Kass says, Men never for in a law. This is a kind law. I make us my bond. Why would you swap bond? And you are down for the best pose. It's a bond. Who was good now? This is wisdom is profitable to direct. What I'm doing now, wisdom is the one directing me. If you put me in police or military, I will fail. Why? Because I don't know. Wisdom directs me on this path. This is my area. If I see a demon now, I know. If I see somebody who is ready to fall, I know. It's my area. Wisdom is directing me in that area. So wisdom will not push me into wrong places. 2019, may wisdom not make you end up in wrong places. I say, may wisdom not make you end up in wrong places. Receive grace to shine. Receive grace to shine. Lift up your hands. Say, my father, my father. This morning, as my hands are lifted, I decree and declare the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God to shine, the wisdom of God to succeed. Say, Lord, any area of my life, I have an advantage. Anything that adds to my grace, give me wisdom. 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lebra kata 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 Maladado shataya Oh kadili bataya Lebra kana bada basataya Lebada basataya In the name of Jesus say my father my father from today, I receive sound wisdom. Any other wisdom that will contradict my destiny, that will make me digress, that will make me miss God, from today, let the blood of Jesus terminate it. In the name of Jesus, 2019, I will make wise decisions. I will make right choices. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Yadaba Sutaya. Oh Jesus. Yadaba Daba Sataya. 